One thing for sure about cobia, they like to hang around big objects and swim around with big fish. And to the astute cobia hunter, that's where to go for good fortune. But before we talk about those trademark habits, let's talk about another trademark of this remarkable fish, that is its migration. There is perhaps no other fish that is as predictable on its migratory run as is the cobia. This is true for both the Atlantic and Gulf. Depending on where one finds himself along the coast, the first show of cobia can always be relied upon to occur within a few days. For example, along the Florida Panhandle, it's usually about the third week of March. First a straggler or two, then those breathtaking pods of a half dozen or so, plying the clear water surface heading west. And when this migration is done, the schools break up, and it's then they begin to favor cover. Whether it be under the platform of an oil rig, an anchored shrimp boat, or in the shadow of a giant fellow creature. Favorites are sea turtles, those giant rays are large sharks. I've known anglers who target hammerheads just to lure cobia within casting range. Because of their habits and their familiarity in form and coloration, some biologists, including this one, believe the cobia family and remoras or shark suckers are closely related. The sucker disc on remoras develops from dorsal spines, like the ones on the dorsum of a cobia, and when they're half-foot juveniles, they look strikingly similar. The cobia is one of the few coastal species found in most warm temperate seas. I don't know their migratory pattern in Australia, but I'd bet it's a mirror image of that on our coast. For sports fishing magazine TV, I'm Dr. Bob Shipp.